Hi, Jennifer Witt here with the Witt Law Group. I wanted to discuss something about evaluations. We have YouTube videos and blogs on what to expect, how to prepare, uh, pretty popular topics. And I understand because most people are very nervous uh, when it comes to their DUI. The vast majority of our clients have only been in trouble one time. And they're trying to understand what is this, you know, criminal evaluation or uh, sorry, chemical uh, dependency evaluation. What is it going to mean to their case? Uh, and of course, everyone always has like, I'm going to, you know, get through a loophole here. I'm going to, you know, do, have a story that explains away this one event. Um, and to be honest, that's not really how it works. And when you're going to your chemical dependency evaluation, those evaluators uh, many of them have used before, have had addiction issues, they have heard every excuse in the book, just be straight with them. So this video is probably um, our top three excuses we hear, and, and I understand when you are telling this story to your attorney or to the evaluator, you don't think it's an excuse because you are kind of buying into it. Um, many people do anyway, they want, they want to understand why did they make this one mistake. So I would say one of the most frequent excuses we hear, and I will say excuses because that's how it is seen and termed and, and evaluated. The excuse is, well, my blow is higher than it should be. You know, I, I think my, I know I blew a 0.15, but it really should be a 0.12. And you know, I've got all these reasons why, or I work in a distillery and it basically through osmosis is going through my skin or I absorb it. I'm sure there is some scientific basis to moving the needle, you know, a tenth here and there, whatever. It's just not the time and place. When you go to an evaluator, springing, um, you know, gee, I think it should have been lower, just so you know, looks like an excuse. And people who have issues with drugs and alcohol make excuses when they are not ready to confront that. So you're kind of throwing up a red flag on yourself, right? So. It's just not, again, if there is an argument to be made, a legal argument as to perhaps the breathalyzer is wrong or something else is going on, that's for your attorney, that the evaluation is not the time and place. Um, and that brings me number two, I would say, it's very unusual, but kind of fits into number one. People will say, well, I don't metabolize alcohol like other people. I have uh, some gut issue and therefore I ferment food. I am essentially like a cow. I ferment my food. Um, that is possible. It has happened. People have, um, proven that and it's not common. In fact, extremely rare. And again, if you're saying, gee, I ferment food, my blow should have been a 0.09, but I blew a 0.12 nobody it's kind of like walking into traffic court and you say well your honor i know i was going 50 or they say i was going 50 in a 25 but i wasn't i was going 47 miles an hour because i know how fast i was going you're still speeding you're there's it's not a gotcha moment um so don't use that it's again bring that up with your attorney if that's something that you have actually a diagnosed medical condition and a doctor's putting their neck out on the on the line for you uh, number three, overserved. I was overserved. I always drink two these two beers, or I always have a couple margaritas, and I've always been fine to drive home. Um, that's not an, a good argument. Uh, number one, it looks like you drink a lot, and number two, since statistically about ninety nine people will go home driving impaired for the one who is caught, they're you're, you're basically just saying. I haven't been caught 99 times. It's been fine. See, I, this one time it didn't work out, and I I know my limits. Um, that's not a that's not a great thing to say to a chemical dependency um, evaluator. Just I uh, hope you can kind of hear that in in the way I'm phrasing it. It's not it, again. It's an excuse. So uh, be really um, careful about that. Again, it's not that people don't get overserved, but when you are looking at an evaluation and you're going to see, do I have a problem is what they're looking at. Do you have a problem? Um, you want to make sure you're not making excuses. You may be over, may have been overserved, and that's something you and your attorney can discuss. Maybe, you know, Hey, I've, I've never been to this restaurant. I ordered a margarita. That might be a, uh, you know, a topic to discuss, but you know, I always drink this and I always know that I can drive home. 
again, not very comforting to anyone involved in the situation. So um, over service is a topic to discuss with your attorney. It doesn't sound good to the evaluator. So remember, just keep it clean, keep it straight. Don't drink alcohol before you go to your evaluation. Don't use marijuana before you go to your evaluation. We recently had someone say, well, but it's legal. Well, alcohol is legal too, but don't go to your evaluation drunk. Don't go with any alcohol in your system to your evaluation. Um, uh, remember, they're looking to see, do you have an issue? Just logically think, what are the things that would show you have an issue? Making excuses, showing up impaired, showing up with drugs. Uh, because you will receive a UA. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful. But again, this is not legal advice. It's just kind of generally what happens for these evaluations. Always talk to an experienced criminal defense attorney in your area. Every state is different. Counties within the state are different. I uh, can't emphasize that enough. Call a local attorney in your area. If you have a case in Kitsap County and want to talk to us about that or bring us on board, we're here seven days a week. So feel free to reach out to Wit Law Group. Thank you.